When I was 12, we had this national exam called the Primary School Living Examination. Every student had to study very hard because a lot of our life banked on this exam. If you did well, your life was pretty much set. So I ended up studying very hard, waking up every morning at 4 a.m. to study. Well, things turned out well, and I did pretty well and ended up going into a good school. And so I thought when I went for my A-level examinations, I should do the same, right? Study hard, drink coffee, and keep repeating. Well, things didn't go out so well. On the day that we received our examination results, my results were bad. Quite literally, they spelled B-B-A-D or bad. That's when I realized that all my hopes, dreams had been crushed. I was very pained. I had put in so much blood, sweat, and tears. Often, I would spend some nights crying because of the pain of studying for the A-levels. I just couldn't understand what had gone wrong. How could I have put in so much effort and nothing happened? How could I have spent so much time and ended up getting such poor results? Maybe that's you today. Despite spending a lot of time, energy, and effort, you find yourself not excelling or getting the goals or achievements that you want. That's why today we wanted to share about two myths you have about hard work leading to success. Because today, there is that misconception, isn't it? That if you work harder, you would get better. There's that culture where you hustle to get to where you want. And everyone famous or successful says that you have to work hard to get your goals. Whilst all that is true, that does come with a caveat. And today I wanted to share with you the two myths that disagree with the common knowledge that hard work leads to more success. First myth, hard work leads to more success. Is that true? Angela Duckworth in her book, Grit, talks about how effort counts twice. It does seem that effort and hard work does indeed lead to more success. Talent times effort equals to skill. Skill times effort equals to achievement. Here you see in this equation by Angela Duckworth, who studied people who were successful that their effort did count for their eventual success. Well, the misconception we have is that effort is a force multiplier rather than an additive measure. This means that you do not end up using brute force by working harder and harder without necessarily working smarter. That's why you instead use your skills as leverage. If you look at this particular video of me, this was an example of me trying to become a better speaker. I had thought that speaking more and more and more would make me a better speaker. But over the years, it dawned on me that I wasn't actually becoming better. In fact, I had been speaking since I was 15 and every time I stood up to speak, people would laugh at me. People would make fun of my grammatical errors and would tease my logical leaps. And here you can see me speaking at the age of 21. After six years of standing up and speaking in front of audiences. And even though the audio quality is poor, you can hear lots of uhs and ums, fillers, and then I can assure you that I wasn't looking into the cup to find more alcohol. But here is what happened just four months later. 
after four months of intense practice with a public speaking society that taught you the basic skills of speaking. Well, here... Well, you can see what happened. I seemed more confident. I stood more confidently and I was no longer using as many ums. But still, it felt like I had come to a plateau, right? I felt like I wasn't getting better even after two years. I was yawning. People were yawning at my speeches and going for the public speaking society whilst initially had supercharged and brought me out of the plateau didn't seem to be bringing out my best. This was what happened in February 2019 after I made more adjustments to how I was improving my skill. Well, even though you might see that particular clip, it looked like someone very confident. It was due to a deliberate intention to improve. Many of us in looking at skill come to this plateau. Uh, and in Angela Duckworth's book, she talks about how we come into this arrested development where we plateau. But for those who go into world-class development, they intentionally do deliberate practice. They get immediate feedback from coaches who bring them to the next level. They are training amongst people who are amongst the world's best. And that's what brings them to the next level. For me, that was what I was doing as well. Skill building is exponential. If you look at it, effort times skill, effort times talent equals to skill, then skill times effort equals to achievement. If you look at it in the traditional sense of hard work leading to more effort, we can be tempted to increase the number of hours we are spending on our particular skill. But if we look at this, both skill and effort increases, then it becomes an exponential gain. If you increase your effort by a bit, uh, 0.1 for example, it is a 1.1 increase in, in the achievement. But if you increase both effort and skill, then it becomes 1.21 or an exponential increase. This is why focusing on both skill and effort is important. Then you might tell me, well, failure leads to more success. That's why I should fail more. Even though I work hard and that might lead to more failure, it doesn't matter because failure is the mother of success. Well, not necessarily so. In a Harvard Business School review, which was later written up by Leslie Berlin in his article, Try, Try, Try Again, or maybe not, he found that 34% of businesses run by businessmen who were already successful in their first business took off and were profitable. But businessmen whose companies had failed the first time had almost the same success rate as those that eventually, that had never had the experience at 23%. So it's not necessarily so that success or failing leads to more success. Instead, you might not necessarily learn from that. That's why today, it's not enough just to fail. It's not enough just to work hard and hope for more failures. It is important also to work smart. Well, the second myth is that more time leads to more success. Well, that's not necessarily so. When I first went to university, I was spending Monday to Sundays with books and lots and lots of coffee. 
there were times when I came home absolutely shattered and feeling like nothing could go in. It felt like I was hammering information into my brain as I was studying. And this clearly didn't work out. My auntie suggested that I take a day off each week just to rest. And surprisingly, I did better. I did better. And today, you might be thinking that, well, I should spend more time at work. But this leads you to procrastinate more. As you can see from this diagram from Tim Urban at waitbutwhy.com, uh, we have three monsters in our brain. And the procrastination monkey is always telling us, well, later, later, I'll have time later. Giving yourself more time doesn't necessarily lead you to be more effective or productive because you tell yourself that, well, since I have more time later, I can do this later, right? But if you limit your time, then you become more effective because you tell yourself that, well, at a certain time, there's going to be no more work. And your brain adjusts to that. As Jim Collins in his book, Time uh, Beyond Entrepreneurship writes, time is finite, work is infinite. Time is finite, work is infinite. Work expands to fill the time that you all allocate to it. And so the more time you give to work, the more time you tell yourself that I will spend working, you end up in states of pseudo work where you might be watching Netflix whilst trying to study, multitasking whilst trying to do your work, you end up not being as effective. Well, the second reason why more time doesn't lead to better work is also because you have a limit to deeply focused work. In Carl Newport's book, Deep Work, he argues that there are two types of work, shallow work and deep work. Shallow work is work like checking your emails, answering calls, answering your WhatsApp messages. And this is work that does not add deep value to the world. Instead, if you look at deep work, this is, that, this is work that people without your training can do. So for example, preparing for a keynote or programming. This work, as Carl Newport shows in his book, is work that adds deep value done in a distraction-free mood and requires deep thinking. Carl Newport argues that there's a limit of four hours to this work that you can do. And so that's why the question you should be asking yourself is, would a college graduate without my requisite level of training be able to do the work that I currently do with no perceptible change in quality. That is what would differentiate deep work from shallow work. In closing, I'm not here to say that you should be lazy and not work hard. Definitely all of us should work hard. But beyond just working hard, it's also about working smart. Beyond working hard, it's also about working smart. Today, we shared two myths about how hard work doesn't necessarily lead to more success and how more time also doesn't lead to more success. Well, today, if you listen to this, there are two things that you can take away. Firstly, spend less time at work and more time at rest. Secondly, Realize that your greatest efforts lie with skill building, which is exponential rather than linear. If this was helpful for you, let me know what was most helpful for you. And remember, work hard and work smart.